Thirty days learning English with common conversations. Ordering. Dialogue one. At the restaurant. Hello, I'll be your waiter today. Are you ready to order, or do you need a few minutes? We're ready. Can I start you off with something to drink? Yes, we'll have wine, please. What would you recommend for food? I'd recommend the smoked pork jowl with pickles. It's excellent. That sounds great. I'll have that. Sure. What about you, ma'am? Can I have pappardelle with sea urchin, please? Yes, ma'am. I will be back with your orders. Thanks. Dialogue two, at the coffee shop. I'll order. What would you like to drink? As always, thank you. Okay. Hi. Would you like to order? I'd like a cup of coffee and a donut. What size do you want? I'd like a small size. And a medium-sized cappuccino. Yes. Oh, I'll have a slice of apple pie. Would you like cream with your pie? No, thanks. Sure. What's your name? Lisa. Great. That's thirty dollars, please. Here you are. It will be ready in just a moment. Thanks. Dialogue three, order food delivery. Hey, Andy, can we order food delivery? What do you want to eat? Pizza. Okay. ABC Pizza. How can I help you? I'd like to make an order. Can I have your address, please? One two three King Street. And your phone number? Nine eight seven zero zero one ten ten. Thank you. What would you like to order? I'd like two seafood pizzas, medium size, please. Okay. Would you like anything to drink? Two bottles of Coca-Cola. The total bill is thirty-five dollars. Okay. How long will that take? About thirty minutes. Thanks. Invitation. Dialogue one, dinner. What are you doing on Christmas Eve? I don't have a plan yet. I wonder if you would like to have dinner with me. That sounds great. Can you text me the restaurant address? Sure. It's the Bateau Restaurant on Twenty Third Street. Great. Oh, the food there is so delicious. Yes, may I come pick you up? Sure. What time will you come? Seven p.m. That sounds good. See you on Christmas Eve. See you. Bye. Dialogue two, picnic. This summer vacation, will you travel with your family? My parents are busy, so we don't travel. But I will go on a picnic with my siblings. That sounds great. Would you like to join us? The more, the merrier. Yes, I'd love it. The trip will start at seven a.m. next weekend. The night before that. Come to my house to sleep, okay? Agree. 
Next morning we will depart together. It will be fun. Yes, summer with trips. Planning. Dialogue one. Go climbing. We need to plan the climb by the end of this month. You're right. We need to choose the destination. How about Yosemite National Park? Good idea. Is the place open all day? Yes, it is. I will check the weather forecast. What does the weather forecast say? It will be a beautiful sunny day. That was lucky. I'll go to the climbing shop to buy the necessary items. Me too. Shall we go now? Let's go. Dialogue two, company meeting plan. About this month's meeting. It will be held on September fifth. Is that okay, sir? That's fine. During the meeting, the team leaders will report the results of the previous month's work, and the sales team reports on sales. And we need a new goal next month. I took notes. The meeting will start at two p.m. Yes, sir. If anyone can't come, the reason should be communicated to their team leader. I got it. I'll compose an email to notify all employees. Great. Description. Dialogue one. My neighbor. I visited your house last week. Yes, I know. When I was leaving, I saw your neighbor. My neighbor. He is so handsome. I have many neighbors. What did he look like? He's tall. His hair is blonde. His green eyes are beautiful. Looks like I know who he is. He's muscular, right? Yes. Who is he? He is Michael. Is he still single? I don't know. Can I come to your house this weekend? <laughs> of course. Dialogue two. My sister-in-law. Did I tell you about my brother's girlfriend? No, you didn't tell me. My brother proposed to her, and she said yes. Now she is my sister-in-law. How wonderful! Is she beautiful? Like an angel, she is very pretty. What does she look like? She has long, straight black hair. Her eyes are big and light brown. She is slim and has smooth white skin. Is she friendly? She is gentle and lovely. Oh, my brother is so lucky. Health. Dialogue one. Backache. <laughs> What's the matter, Dad? Oh, my back hurts so much. Sit down on this chair and rest for a while. <laughs> oh, I'm old. How long have you had a backache like this? I don't know. Sometimes it hurts a little, but now it hurts more. I guess it's because I tried to lift that box. Let's go to the hospital. I will take you there. 
It's okay. I feel better now. No, Dad, please. Uh, okay, let's go to the hospital. Dialogue 2. I've got the flu. You look a bit under the weather. I feel horrible. I think I've got the flu. <coughs> Ugh, my nose. It's gone red. I've blown my nose way too much today. And you've sneezed so many times. So stay away from me. It's okay. I'm strong as an ox. Did you take any medication? I took a vitamin C. You should take the day off and go to the hospital. I will. Hope you get well soon. Thank you. Asking for help. Dialogue 1. Moving house. Hey, bro. I need your help. Hey, what's up with you? I'm moving house this weekend. You know that. I remember. You told me. Do you mind helping me? When is that? On Saturday, around 9 a.m. Let's see. That's okay. I'm free on Saturday. Thank you so much. Don't mention it. Would you like to eat something that afternoon? It's my treat this time. Wow. Great. Dialogue 2. Could you do me a favor? William, can you show me how to ask for help in English? Sure, Jin. Thank you. There's many ways to ask for help. You can say, could you help me for a second? I will take notes. Another way is to ask, could you do me a favor? Okay, I get it. The easiest way to remember is, I need your help, please. Sure. You can also say, Can you lend me a hand? That's a good one. Announce a news. Dialogue 1. A good news. Mom! Mom! Where are you? I'm in the living room. You might want to sit down for this. I have something to tell you. Okay. What's going on? Can you believe it? I got accepted to Harvard College. Wow. Awesome. That, that is amazing news. Congratulations, my daughter. Thanks, Mom. When will you start studying there? This December. You are great. Let's go out and have dinner today. Okay, Mom. I want to tell Dad. Where's Dad? He's in the garden. Dialogue 2. A bad news. Do you remember the apartment fire that happened yesterday? Fire? Yes, the apartment building is one street away from us. Oh, I remember. That's really horrible. They've just said on the news that a man died in the fire. Oh my god! The fire was caused by a faulty gas oven. So sad to hear that. What about the others? Some people have serious burns. Some people have minor burns. But 
not life-threatening. Hometown. So, John, where are you from? I guess my hometown is not too big. It's a little town in the countryside, in Northampton. There are only 10,000 people there. So it is very quiet in my hometown. I do not really like it. Wow, there aren't very many people. No, it's very small. Is there anywhere to go in your town? There aren't very many businesses. There isn't a shopping mall. There are a lot of grocery stores. And there are a lot of gas stations. But there isn't much to do there. Oh, really? Are there any movie theaters? Well, there is one movie theater, so that's a nice thing to do. Is the movie theater good or bad? In fact, there are many screens in the theater. There are eight different movies showing. How about at night? What do you want to ask about? What's fun to do? How about at night? Is there very much nightlife? Yeah, there is not so much, but there is a bowling alley. It's fun to go bowling. <laughs> there is a bowling alley and a movie theater. Anything more to do? There is one restaurant where you can go for tacos and burritos. And there's one more restaurant for pizza and spaghetti. Um, that must be boring. But during the daytime, you can go to the park. What's inside the park? There's a river that goes through the town. So in the middle of town, there's a river. And there's a park that goes along both sides of the river. And at the park, there is a tennis court and a disc golf course. Disc golf? Yeah, I like to play disc golf with my friends. It's really fun. And after we finish playing disc golf, we usually go to the pizza restaurant. Oh, I see. How about schools? Are there very many schools? Let's see. No, there aren't very many. There's only one elementary school, one junior high school, and one high school. That's it. Interesting. Yeah, there aren't very many schools, but the town doesn't need more schools because there aren't very many people there. I see. Are there any mountains? No, the whole area is very flat. There are no mountains, but there are a lot of trees. In fact, there are trees on my town's sign because my town is famous for all the trees on every street. Oh wow, sounds like a great city. So, Harley, as I understand, you live in Croatia. Where are you from? What do you like and dislike about your place? Yes, I live in Croatia, in a city named Pula. Where is the city, actually? It is situated in the Istrian Peninsula, and it's the biggest city in Istria. It counts a population of around 60,000. And do you like it? What I like about Pula is the fact that it's perfectly sized. It's not too big nor too small. And it has all of the civilization benefits as any Western European city. That's good though. For example, in the area of education and culture, there is a university, a theater, a cinema, a great number of galleries, museums, libraries. There are some historical sites and so on. Then, for example, in the health area, there is a hospital, a number of private clinics, dentist offices, ambulances and pharmacies, and so on. What about places for entertainment? There are places to go, such as restaurants, bars, exhibitions, concerts, especially in the summer during various festivals, sports, gastronomics, Musicals, dances, and theatrical events. 
Wow, that sounds interesting. Also, Pula is surrounded by the Adriatic Sea, so you can always go to the beach or to one of the many beaches to sunbathe or go fishing or sailing. Really? I really like living near the sea. If you prefer the land, you can take a field trip to the surrounding places and discover their natural and other attractions. Altogether, I really love living there. Okay. You only told me about your positive sides of living in Pula. What about your dislikes? Well, like any other place, there is no perfection. The downside is that we have a huge traffic problem, I would say, especially lately due to some construction projects. That sounds uncomfortable. So I recommend using public transportation whenever possible, or simply going on foot. Some people might say that Pula doesn't exactly have a wild nightlife, but I don't consider it a downside, rather a peaceful alternative to some other tourist destinations. So that's it. Would you prefer to live somewhere else? To be honest, I'm not kind of a city person, and I am quite fed up with the traffic jam in the city. So if I were to live somewhere else, it would have to be somewhere off the beaten track to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. That way, I can be closer to nature and soak up fresh air every morning. Most people in this world do not live in their hometowns. Why? Well, I guess the majority of people feel that there could be more opportunities outside of their hometowns, and consequently comfort zones. Therefore, many believe that living in such a comfortable place with relatives and friends can be distracting and too relaxing on the way of pursuing goals. They might go abroad as well, right? Yes, people, not only youth, strive to explore other places and experience different cultures across the globe. Which affects a person's personality more? The hometown of the current city? Why? Hometown defines how a person behaves, and the current city defines how a person wants to change. I think that the hometown has a much greater impact on a person than the current city. Okay. Thanks, Harley. Thank you. Talking about your pet. Becky was walking her dog in the park when she ran into her old high school friend, James. They both love dogs and have small talk. Hi, James. Hi, do you recognize me? It's Becky. We went to the same high school, remember? How have you been? Oh, right. I'm okay. Hi, how about you? I haven't seen you since high school. I'm fine. How long have you been here? Is your place near here? I just moved here last week. I live right down the street. And you? My apartment is across the street. I'm taking my dog here every day. Your dog is so cute. Thank you. My dog and I want to hang out in this park too. It's so beautiful, wide, and has so many dogs to play with. What breed is your dog? He is so handsome. He's a Samoyed. He is three years old, so he's about 35 pounds. Wow, his white fur coat is stunning. Such a big, beautiful boy. What's his name? It's Sam. He is a loving dog and highly energetic breed, so needs vigorous exercises so I have to walk him two times a day. He is so big. Is he dangerous? No, Samoyeds are not at all dangerous or aggressive. In fact, he is a natural-born cuddle bug, but he can be stubborn sometimes. <laughs> so, what about your little guy here? Oh, his name is Pom Pom. He is a Pomeranian. He is only one year old. Oh, interesting. Poms are known for being smart, curious, and energetic. 
Yes, but Pomeranians tend to be suspicious around strangers. And their small size makes large people and animals especially intimidating to them. And they can be aggressive, so it may not be the best choice for families with small kids. Really? I didn't know these small guys can su cause such problems. Yeah, but I had him since he was a newborn. And playing with him helps me relax, so he is like family to me. I know that feeling. Dogs are a great company, and very loyal. We should go to the park together tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Maybe 5 p.m.? Our dogs can play together. Okay, see you then. Bye, see ya. John and Chuck go to a pet shop to buy a puppy for John's daughter. Thank you, Chuck, for coming here with me. My daughter loves puppies, so I really want to buy her one for her birthday. No problem, John. I'm glad I can help. Hi, guys. What can I help you with? Hi, I'm looking for a puppy for my little daughter. Great. Do you have anything you want in particular? Um, not yet. But I think I want one that is friendly and not aggressive. Suitable for small kids. We have these golden retriever puppies. They are confident, smart, kind, and loyal dogs. They are extremely patient, which makes them a perfect match for kids. Yes, and they love to play, meaning that your kid will fall in love instantly. That's good. Do they need any special care? Well, yes, they need proper care for their glorious golden coats, which require twice weekly brushing. Um, my wife and I are very busy. I don't think we have time for that. What about these little guys here? These are poodles. They are great for kids with allergies, as they shed very little. But their coat requires scheduled grooming. Okay, how about these? Oh, these Newfoundlands are considered to be one of the most intelligent breeds in the world. And these dogs just happen to love children and are very protective of them. Yes, I heard this breed is gentle, kind, and patient. Almost like the Mother Teresa of dogs. Yes, that's true, but they best suit a family with large open spaces and they are known to drool and shed excessively, so their long coats will also require regular grooming and upkeep. Um, we live in an apartment, so we don't have enough space for large dogs. Oh, how about a beagle? These are small in size and have a calm temperament. If your kids love the outdoors, this breed will fit right in. Oh, they are so cute and bright. I think your daughter will love it. Yeah, I think so too. Smart, friendly, and happy, the beagle usually gets along with other pets too. I think this is a perfect choice for my kid in my house. I would take this chocolate tree puppy. Is it a female or a male? Wonderful. This is a male puppy, so he can grow up to 22 and a half pounds to 24 and a quarter pounds. Good. Do you have any tips for raising him? This guy is not picky. He eats a lot, and you should bring him outside for a walk frequently. Thank you. I will take good care of it. Great. Thank you so much. If you have any problems or questions, just ask me. Thank you. I will bring him home to show him to my daughter right away. She would be so happy. Great. Bye. Have a good day. You too. P. 
Taylor invites Jason to come to her house after a date. They talk about their pets for a while. Thank you for everything, Jason. Tonight was perfect. I'm glad you feel that way, Taylor. Do you want to come in and have a cup of tea? Yes, sure, thanks. Here, come on in. Wow, your house is very lovely. Thanks. Oh, hi, Lulu. Jason, this is my dog, Lulu. Oh, wow, a corgi. Is it a male or a female? It's a female. She is a rescue dog. She is old and scared when I got her, but now she is doing a lot better and loves being around people. Oh, what a good girl. She is lucky to have you. Thanks, but I can say that I'm lucky to have her too. Her loving personality helps me through some really tough times. I know, pets are amazing. They are man's best friend. Do you have a pet? Yes, I have a cat at home. Oh, really? Cats are so cute and cuddly, too. I had a cat, too, when I was young. Yeah, I got her when she was a newborn, and now it's been nine years. Wow, she must be so close to you. What's her name? It's Mimi. She is my friend. She follows me everywhere at home. That's cute. What color is she? She is a tricolor. Oh, wow! Tricolor cats are especially smart, beautiful, and rare. Yes, she is the only tricolor in her litter. You can bring your cat over sometimes, because my dog is very friendly with other animals. Great! She loves meeting new friends. Maybe next weekend? Sure, we can bring them to the park. Okay. Anyways, it's getting late. I'd better be going home to Mimi. Thank you for the cup of tea. You're welcome. Bye, see you later. I'm so excited to see your cat. Bye, see you next week. Talking about university life. Situation 1. Nick tells his father, Joe, about his first day of university. Hi, son. How was your first day of university? It's good, Dad. But I have to admit that it was quite different from what I had expected. Really? How was it different? Well, I had some strange experiences. I was baffled to see students playing outdoor and indoor games and enjoying radio programs during class hours. Wow, that's awesome. Students are free in their movements these days. Yes, Dad. There is no restriction on uniforms. People can register their own class schedule. They can do things according to their choice. So how is the campus? I was very much delighted to see that the grand library of the university where I could find all the books on every subject. And the laboratory is fully equipped. I can't wait to perform ex experiments there. Wow, that's great. You kids these days are so lucky with the infrastructure like that. You can study so much more effectively. So did you make any new friends? Not yet, but I found all the newly admitted students in the high spirits. They were all happy to make friends. I will attend a meeting for new students and hopefully I will have some new friends. And what about your new teachers? My new teachers are quite different from my high school teachers, too. They treat us like adults. Because you're all 18 and over. 
You have full responsibilities for your actions from now on. I know, Dad. I'm so excited to start my university life. Good luck, son. I remember my first day at Stanford. It was a sunny and bright day. I woke up early, and I spent a lot of time choosing what I wanted to wear. I felt excited, and at the same time I was very nervous, because I don't know anybody, and I was lost. So what did you do? I didn't know how to get to my classroom. I had to ask one person about the building where I was going to take classes. And luckily he was going to the same class as I was. This person was very nice and told me the right direction. Was that the day you met Uncle Ted? Yes, he is my first and best friend from university. He sat next to me in that class and we had to do a group project together, then we became best friends. I think that it is natural that on the first day we feel nervous, but things always have a happy ending. I am always going to remember that day because I had the opportunity to meet more people. And most importantly, I met the best friends that I have ever had. Don't worry, son. You will meet the best friends at university. Thanks, Dad. Situation 2 Mike is a freshman. He meets Jacob, a junior, and asks for his advice about university life. Hey, are you new here? I'm Mike. I'm a freshman. No, I'm a junior. I'm Jacob. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Where do you come from, Jacob? I'm from Miami. How about you? I'm from LA. What is your major? I'm studying computer science. Wow, that's cool. My major is English literature. One of the biggest reasons why I chose that is that I want to be a writer. Oh, wow. I hope I can work as a computer engineer after I graduate. I'm so nervous about the next semester. I'm afraid of failing. I have test anxiety. How about you? Believe me, I still have concerns too, but don't worry. Do you want some advice? Sure, thank you. What was your biggest fear before you began your freshman year of university? I worried that schoolwork would be too hard. I wouldn't be able to keep up, or I wouldn't know the correct answer when called on in class. But everyone makes mistakes, don't worry. But what should I do if I fall behind in my classes? If deadlines are fast approaching and you're behind on your work, you should structure your time, take notes, do extra homework, ask your friends things that you don't understand. Thanks. You make me feel so much better. But how do I make the most effective notes? Before you even think about heading to class, make sure that you've read all the pre-assigned reading from your professor. Go to class with a positive attitude and pay attention. Experiment with different taking notes techniques to find one that's right for you. Should I take part in a club or student organization? Personally, I think taking part in one can be a rich and rewarding experience. You can find new friends that likely share the same interests. Are you a member of any student organization? And what clubs should I participate in? I'm the English Book Club, and I think there are many student clubs and organizations for different majors and departments. Such clubs can be a lot of fun, as well as a great academic resource for you. Great. Can I ask you a personal question? What's your biggest motivation for your university life? Because I know that on average, a student with a university education will make more money throughout his or her lifetime than a student without one, but it's not easy to stay motivated in school. 
what should I do if I lose interest in studying? You should design a life plan and commit to your dreams. Think about it. If your life was as good as it could be, what would it look like? Design a road map. Keep this map in mind. Thank you. One final question. What's the best advice you would tell a friend who is now entering university? Set high personal and academic standards for yourself. Believe in yourself. Realize that school is work, it's not playtime. Settle for nothing less than your very best. Thank you for your advice. I think I'm ready to start my university life. Wishing you lots of success as you begin your new journey. You can always talk to me. Text me if you need help. Sure. See you later. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment on my video. Please, subscribe to Learn English with Jessica channel to watch more helpful videos. Goodbye.